yes, that music can mean only one thing. It's the semi -re semi relevant movie quiz. The quiz where we try and stump each other with stupid questions that are kind of about 1931's Cimarron. We've got three quests. Oh, no, I've got two questions, actually, because this was hard. I've got three. And well done, Dave. And whoever gets the most questions right wins a giant statue to make up for a life of leaving your family to fend for themselves in the harsh Oklahoman wilderness. <laughs> it's a good pause. So, One of my favourite bits is you is the prize. Uh, you could have just gone with the speedboat every time, like Bullseye, um, but I, I respect the game. Um, who's yeah, going no, first, I'm, Sam? Who do you want to go first? I, I'm going to go first and you're going to win because I just, I couldn't. I, I think Well, then that questions. sets the bar because if I get both of these right, then you can only get, it can only be a draw. I'm Okay. You're not going to win by a technicality here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so question one. Cimarron was RKO Pitcher's first Oscar win, which is going to be four of them, but that's fine. Years later, the studio would controversially be sold by Howard Hughes. To which of the following companies? Is it A, the General Tire and Rubber Company, B, the Walt Disney Company, or C, the Philip Morris Cigarette Company? I don't, I don't know this at all. <laughs> I mean, right, Disney, definitely a real company. Got you. Um, the Morris they're all real, Company. They're, they're all, all real, real companies. They're all real companies. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to. What year? Can, we, can you tell me what year this happened? What year this uh, uh, sale went through? 1950 something. Cool. That, that's was, enough. Was, enough in the 50s. Yeah. In the 50s, so, it's a good time for Disney. Um, well, Howard Hughes. Disney's quite early on, and yeah. Howard Hughes basically was he 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 at this stage in his crazy life, starting to deteriorate slightly. He bought uh, Arco Pictures a while back and was trying to. Um, kind of secure control of it and somebody basically said absolutely not so he he decided to sell the company in spite uh to, to prevent the uh, this person from from having any control whatsoever and so i think right. they left with like a few million dollars yeah. and that was it so uh, he was he I, was offloading okay. it okay it wasn't disney then uh, also because i don't think any i know some archaeo material and I don't, and it would be on Disney Plus, basically. If if Disney owned this, then they would. It, they're old enough where they Good would logic. have a, they would have a, they, you know, the the Howard Hughes, the big Howard Hughes movie would be on it. Would be on Disney yeah. Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not because it definitely would have recommended it to me because I'm definitely in that category of loser. That's right. Nerd. Desperate Housewives, thirties Howard Hughes movies, American Dad. That's it. Yeah. Um, what were the other ones? So it was the Morris the, Cigarette Company. The, the, Mar the Philip Morris Cigarette Company or the General Tire and Rubber Company. This is a, this is this is a. I think it's the General Tire and Rubber Company. Okay, why? Um, I just got a gut feeling that um, that could be the cigarette company, but I just don't think it's the cigarette company. I think the cigarette companies they're not looking to diversify from what well, they weren't looking to diversify in the fifties from cigarettes because cigarettes were. Up, up, up. <laughs> Banging. Smoking. Smoking. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Correct. Well done. The General Tie and Rubber Company also owned an aerospace uh, outfit and a range of radio stations. And they, uh, I think they they sold all of, they sold, sold loads of assets and eventually sold the company, sold RKO um, off not that long afterwards. So there we go. Not the most... Uh, bountiful purchase you've ever seen <laughs> so let's go to question two irene dunn who plays sabra kravit in this uh m movie was nominated for f an oscar five times but never managed to clinch a win which one of these three other actors has also been nominated but never won an oscar a julia roberts b Laurence olivier or c glenn close that's a good multiple choice. Selection. I know what I'm doing. This is why I only got two because this took me fucking ages to get to, to get these right. I feel like Julia Roberts is the Julia Roberts is a funny one because that's the obvious. Like she's absolutely on that line. It's like you could almost call it the Julia Roberts line of like long long career, long career in leading roles, wildly popular, made loads of money doesn't appear in a lot of good movies 
Um, and therefore, yeah. like, but then Glenn Close kind of similarly, maybe not not the the bomb of Roberts, but she's also appeared in a lot of movies that I would say would have been got her a nomination. Like your better quality of movies, um, but not necessarily the win, maybe because because yeah, exactly cause the nomination. And Laurence Olivier feels like a trick question sort of answer where. God, I can't believe Laurence Olivier, Olivier never won an Oscar. Um, and just to just this isn't a trick question where all three of these people got nominated <laughs> five times and never won. No, an Oscar, I'm. Is it? I, listen, listen, I'm I just, being. I, I'm I being, just have to ask. I just had no, to. No, I'm being very fair with you. Very fair. Would never do that to you, Dave. Unless it would be really funny, in which case, strap in. Well, no, what's happened, though, according to the rules, and the moral rules, because I'm a white man, therefore I set the moral rules, that's what all movies tell us, <laughs> is that is that because I've asked you outright if that's the case, because that would be my that would be where I'd lean, is that that's the answer. It's a trick question. Because no, I've asked you, it's fine. No bullshit. No, no trick okay. question, I promise. I promise on our, <laughs> on our whole 15 I can't year think friendship. of loads of Glenn Close... Um, there's that movie is it Glenn Close where she's it's she's um, she's a bunny but she literally burns boils a bunny um, that feels like it might have been a terrible movie um, yeah Fatal Attraction Fatal Attraction but I don't know if that's maybe. sort of Oscar buzzy movie maybe right I need um, an answer come on I'm just going to go with Julia Roberts this feels like the safe place Julia Roberts Julia Roberts is incorrect it was Glenn Close Son of a bitch. I know. It's very disappointing, Dave. So, Julia Roberts has four nominations and one win for Erin Brockovich. Oh, fucking Erin Brockovich. I, that's Lawrence the one Bro- where I was like, that either got no Oscar buzz or fucking all of it. Yeah, it did it. Lawrence we should do that movie because I bet that is the most boring, trite piece of trash you've ever seen. I, I, I Absolutely, let's do it. Uh, Lawrence Olivier, ten nominations and only one win for 1948's Hamlet, which is interesting. And Glenn Close, eight nominations as recently as 2020, but no wins yet. So that's a pretty... Justice for Glenn Close. ...smattering of applause for Glenn Close and for you, Dave. So that's (laughs) one point, and I look forward to trouncing you once again. Let's do it. Right, well, I'm excited. So my three questions. Um, I'd like to dig a bit bit deep here. Um... So this is a Western movie. Um, and who's our favourite Western star that we're always giving shit to? That's right, John Wayne. John Howdy, Wayne. Pilgrim. Okay, um, it's unclear whether he ever actually said that or if it's just something that we and American Dad say. <laughs> uh, John Wayne was an amazingly prolific actor. He is maybe the actor who represents Westerns because he was in so many of them. How many Westerns did John Wayne appear in? Was it A, 43? B, 80, or C, 145. Oh, my God. What a range. What a range we're going from here. I mean, I I would, you know, if someone said to me that John Wayne has been in 43, 80, or 145 Westerns, (laughs) I'd be like, yeah, I believe every single one of them. There's there's not an answer there that, that makes me go, nah. I mean, 145 seems like a lot. That seems like that's a lot of movies just westerns like his entire career could be 140 was just westerns in fairness so name I, a non-western I, john wayne film right now i'll wait uh I that's right I, yeah. <laughs> so i'm well on that basis though i'm going to discount 145 i'm going to say that's too many movies for that's that's, that's a career worth of movies and Maybe a Western, not just Western. So that leaves me with 80, 43. The round number of 80, I'm suspicious of, just because that seems a little bit... If that had been 81 or 79, I'm feeling, mm, maybe, maybe, but that's so... But then 8, 43. He did do a lot of Westerns, a lot of trash, especially later on. Okay, judgment call. I'm going to go 43. Oh my god! It was eighty. I thought. Do you know what? I thought I'd get you with this because god I thought the same. I was like, as if it's eighty even. Um, and this was according to the list. There were several lists I saw, 
the 145 I put in because there was one that said he, I think he did, you are absolutely bang on, about 140, 150 movies. Like, that is a career and a, and a his... big career worth of movies, yeah. I should say. Um, there was an actor, I can't remember his name, you'd recognize him obviously, but he was in 230 westerns or something, but like never as a leading man. I think John Wayne was a leading man, so much of it. Uh, but yeah, eighty westerns, which I thought was a phenomenally large number. You know, I I went I went for the I went for the the answer that was like the safe one. I thought one hundred forty three that seems safe. If he but if he'd done one hundred forty five, then eighty of them being westerns makes sense because that leaves you know sixty odd movies that he would have that he would have done that weren't westerns, which <laughs> seems about try right. to not do more westerns. Yeah. God damn it! Um, right, next one. Uh, the next question is, so um, this film was made in 1931, which maths fans will know was 92 years ago. Um, as of recording. Which, which of the, as we're recording, as of now, dating the podcast, uh, which of the following three actors was not born in 1931? Okay. So we're looking for the odd one out. This cat, this one of these people was not born in the year of our... One of them wasn't born in 1931. Hit me. Let's go. William Shatner. <laughs> wow Gene Hackman wow or James Tolkien so James, James Tolkien, Tolkien is the uh, principal from Back to the Future and he's in a thousand other things he's an is angry he related, bald man is he related to uh, J.R.R. J.R. R. Tolkien no it's it's T-O-L-K-E-N okay right um, he's in all the Back to the Future films um, and he was also in Masters of the Universe in a very similar role, as well as thousands of other things. He's a real that's guy. There were a few other people I could have picked um, to put in this series, but he feels like one of them. One of the people I could have picked. <laughs> you, I think you were pretty close to giving away the answer there, Dave, in your in your rambling. And I'm just you think I think you just have I have given it did. away, or I've muddied the waters. It's I, hard to I tell. Think you just about saved it. With me. He is one of the people who could be in this list. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so. I know for a fact that Gene Hackman is, number one, we've talked about it recently, still alive and he's in his 90s. All three I, of these people are still alive, by the way. Yes, so I think... James Tolkien, I, maybe, because his Wikipedia page, potentially the, the news might not get out that he had passed. Straight away, yeah, whereas the other two. So I think Gene Hackman... 1931 feels re- feels right to me. Um, so the the principal in Back to the Future, you say. I I, could, I did not know who that was. I thought you were talking about the son of. I really I, I really did. I really did think you would know who that was. No, no, I, didn't I don't know, know why. That. But James Tolkien is a name that I know. I always I I love seeing him in movies because he's always playing the same role, and it's yeah. like angry old bald short white man. Um, and it's fantastic. One so, of my favourite actors. Yeah. So I think I think he's potentially I think he's potentially nineteen thirty one material as well, just because of where he sits. He's like he's probably in his late forties, fifties in uh Back to the Future. So Carry the Noodle, um, it must be around he must be around ninety odd now. He must be. Shatner, I think, is a little bit younger. Just a little bit. I think he's maybe like 37 or maybe 40. Like, So I'm going to say... God, I hope... I, fucking, I'm going to kill myself if I got this wrong. I'm going to say William Shatner was not born in 1931. I feel bad about this one, Sam, because um, I feel like your methodology is really good, um, but is, is not really playing into the premise which I've got. So you're wrong. Um, oh, fuck off. William Shatner and James Tolkien were born in 1931. Gina Hackman Gene... was born in late 1930. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I was thinking, like, because I was looking at... Um, I was initially you going to... Such here's a here's piece what of I was going to do. Dave. Here's to explain this to you. I was you initially going to have actors who are 31. Like, I'll just have the word 31. Except going down the list, I didn't know who any of them were. <laughs> It it is a se- it is it's look, listen it's a semi semi relevant movie quiz it's in the title yeah. I understand but um, fuck you 
And I was going to do, and I was going to test your knowledge because Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner were born in the same year. My initial question, which you wouldn't have known the answer to, was going to be who was born closest to the premiere of this film. Um, But that would have just been like literally looking on Wikipedia and knowing what month these people were born in. And there was like Gene Hackman is somebody who I always think of as older than he is. And I do the same thing with Shatner. I think Shatner is younger than than he is because of all Mm. the plastic surgery, basically. (laughs) <laughs> and the fact that he hasn't disappeared from our TV screens. Um, he was yeah, in space. Uh, William, he was in William space. William Shatner was like born in 1931. Um, as, was, as was Leonard Nimoy, but I thought that I might give it away because he might know that they were the same age. No, I didn't know that. He... Shatner was in space. Also, also 1931, I... Ian Holm, which I almost put. I decided not to put any dead people God. in there. You, you know, the problem is, is that like, because of our, oh, like, when we, I just think of, of Ian Holm being... Ian Holm in forty five, yeah. In in, in, in one of the sixties, right? Or Ian Holm in Alien. I'm like, he's fucking dead. <laughs> like he's <laughs> yeah. and Gene Hackman well, this should is the be trouble. dead. This, this is why it's a good question because what I should have done really is I should have picked an actor who stopped acting when they were in their forties, and then you would always think of them as that age. And that's something that obviously Shatner were aware of how old he is. Hackman as well because he worked so late and is somehow still alive. Um, and also looked 50 when he was 20. Yeah. I think um, I do a massive fuck you to, to, to you, Dave, for tricking me with that 1930. And, uh, when was he born in 1930, exactly? Uh, Gene Hackman. Um, uh, January 1930. So I guess it is a, it is a full year, almost. You are right, Sam. I, I'm trying to better myself. What I should have done was picked an odd one out. But then... I really would have had to pick three people you kind of knew, but not really. It's tough. Otherwise, it anyway. gives the game away. So I'm zero for zero. So if I can, <laughs> if I get this next question right, then we tie, uh, which is Correct. probably con- considering that I only had two questions. You have a thirty-three percent chance of getting this answer correct. Otherwise, so you win. This movie was one hundred and twenty-four minutes long, according to Wikipedia, and boy, did it feel. All of it's 124 <laughs> minutes long. Now, three other Westerns, according to Dave Research, have won the best picture, right? The three movies are True Grit, Dances with Wolves, and No Country for Old Men, right? One of these movies is shorter than Cimarron, and the <laughs> other three are longer, and the other two are longer. Which of these three movies... I'll read them out again in a second. Which of these three movies was shorter than Cimarron? Oh my god. So we god. have, to be this fair, in chronological so... order, Dances with Wolves, True Grit, the newer one, and No Country for Old Men. I this think it's the newer a... one. Let me just check that. Yeah, this is such an amazing question. This is such a stretch. And you have, you know, it perfectly typifies exactly what we're trying to do with this quiz format, doesn't it? Because this is just exactly. It's so barely relevant, barely relevant, right? So one of these movies, it is, True it Grit, is the new. It is the new True Grit. The new, not, not the new original, True, not the yeah, John Wayne one. Confusingly, so 21st Century True Grit. So 1990 no. Dances with Wolves, 2007 No Country for Old Men, 2010 True Grit. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, I'm I, I'm going to go with our general theory that movies are getting longer, so. Dances with Wolves, I've not seen. We should probably do at some point if we, you know, well, we will because well, we it's the best picture in about seven years when we when we get to this <laughs> one. Um, so that leaves. So I'm I'm, I'm just going to discount that. I'm going to say straight away, uh, it's not Dances with Wolves. And then I'm going to go True Grit, No Country. For, I've seen No Country for Old Men. I've not seen True Grit. Ooh, I do sure remember. Yeah, I know. I, I do remember true. I do remember No Country for Old Men being, you know, hefty and worthy and lots to say. And but to be honest, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I'm gonna say for the tie to keep me in the game. No Country for Old Men is longer than Cimarron. No, no, I'm not, that's not what I'm asking you for, because two of them are longer. 
Oh, sorry, which one's shorter? Right. True Grit is shorter than... Correct. Cimarron. Yes! So, would you, like to hear, would you like to hear the times? So, like I said, Cimarron's 124 minutes. Um, True Grit is 110 the new 110. one, 2010 Ooh, one. It's close. It's a re it's a really good movie. It's a really really good movie. You should watch well, it. Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it eventually. Um, so, what was No Country for Old Men? No Country for Old Men was one two six, I think. One two six. So, so a bit close. Yeah, quite some, yeah, close. 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 Close again. Uh, Dances with Wolves. King. Well, I really hope we've um, faded from the podcast. Um, by this time, Dances with Wolves is three hours and fifty-six minutes long, which, which is two hundred and thirty-six minutes. <laughs> two hundred thirty-six <laughs> minutes of Kevin Costner writing, directing, producing, and doing the catering for for that movie. Wow! Yeah. So that's the end of the game. We have. A tie, and we both leave with nothing. Or we can split the statue uh, of the, the of of to, to make up for life. What we thinking? A family my, to fend my head themselves. on your body, your head on my body, or we splitting straight down the middle, like some kind of like St sewn together straight, creation. It is straight down the middle. It's got to be. It's got to be. And it's because a good thing we we're have, around the same height, it will make it somewhat possible. Well, and because we're two generic white guys, we're going to just look exactly the same. No one will be able to tell the difference. <laughs> Because that's how it works. Yeah, the hair will just be curlier on one side. That's literally the only difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. It's fine. It's. Uh, I think it's a. It's a good place to be. So we have done it for fuck's sake. We've got well, through the standings. This movie. Let's um. Let's just um remember the standings. So technically, and I do mean technically, uh, I'm ahead. Uh, we drew no, this week. Not. Shut up. We drew this week. I won last week because I made my questions impossible. <laughs> Oh, I won last week. I got them. No, I, I won, won last week because you didn't get um, any of mine right because, because you I didn't made give the questions options. impossible. Exactly. Right. Absolutely now, not. That's why I'm saying, hear me out. Technically, so technically, I am ahead with one draw this week, one win last week, and technically, one win for Rushmore because I didn't make any questions. I think. Uh, they which means that you didn't get any points, which means that technically I won. It's my favourite so joke. The standings currently every... are David, 725 points. Sam, seven points. <laughs> okay. I, I am going to get that. You're in it. You're still in verified. it. Because the points are imaginary, just like the podcast. Just like because the podcast. the points are imaginary, you're really in it, Sam. Because you, if you win next week, you can award yourself as many points as you would like. I'm, I'm going to award myself infinity plus one. Yes. <laughs> no playground Fuck rules you. here, Sam. Real numbers only. Fuck you. Right, well, I think, Dave, I appreciate your goal uh, as much as it does pay me. I can't believe I fucking didn't get 143, 145. That's just going to annoy me. But we are done well, with this. We're not quite done. Just simmer the music down for one second. Simmered. Next time, just as, a, just as a, a little teaser, the next best picture we will be doing in the next six to eight weeks i presume is grand hotel which is a 1932 who who are you film. teasing who, who, who's who's being teased because that doesn't sound good well no it no doesn't hear me sound out here. Good. it doesn't sound great i'll i'll give you but but starring greta garbo not somebody i've seen in a film before big big golden age of hollywood star and john barrymore nepotism <laughs> i was really hoping i was really really hoping that there was someone in this movie, Cimarron, that we watched, who went on to found an acting d dynasty, and they're just yeah. I, I did look at this. It was a real shame see. because I was like, that would be a great trivia question. Is is who who went on to found a nep <laughs> nepotistic dynasty? And yeah. the answer was nobody. Next week, nobody. I think there'll be a few. The Lionel band Barrymore's band. in it as well. All the bands, right? Well, I'm sorry, Dave. I appreciate this, but your music, just like the end of the Oscars, your speech is coming to an end. Please conclude. We're going to raise the music up louder and louder until you stop talking. This is the Mary Poppins music. Yeah, this is going to get us taken down from YouTube. Shit, go. 